Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic. And as you can see, I actually shrunk the, the window of this little space here. Because in the last video, I pretty much went over time. And that was really dangerous. I need to be able to see my clock and I can't see it when it's uh, full screen. But anyways, uh, in this tutorial, what we're going to be discussing are controls. In this one, we'll specifically be using the label. Comments, variables, and different data types you can assign to variables. So let's get started. Uh, as you could, um, might have remembered, I was a little dumbfounded. Uh, if you open the toolbox, all the controls aren't there. I didn't realize this, but that's because I've never, I've never done that before. They don't appear when you're in the code. You have to be in the designer, when you, which makes sense. And then you can see all the controls. But basically, over, uh, over the course of the core, pro I'm going to be going over all the core program programming videos first before I do these, uh, because you'll need to know some pieces of core programming concepts before you'll be able to use a lot of these really uh, but at the end I will go through all of these and just so you know once you're done with the co core programming all this stuff will be a breeze it'll be easy but I'll do the containers that's not really anything to worry about menus and toolbars which are I really love menus and toolbars they're just you know menus toolbars just everything's cool and most of this stuff I actually don't even know what these things do but uh I mean, they have little descriptions there with tool tips, as you can see here. But uh, yeah, I won't. I won't be able to. Uh, uh, that'll probably be my level two. Like I know, I know cues are going to be my level two, uh, which are, which is over a year away. I mean, it's going to be a while before I do level two on C sharp and Visual Basic because uh, the C plus plus in Java is more important right now. Sorry, sorry, but priorities. But anyways, uh, in order to create a control, just click this. You don't need to drag it, and just click it wherever then you can click and drag and move it wherever and auto size is off right now so or excuse me auto size is true and I like to make it false and the reason is so I can see the border I can see exactly where it goes I can resize it at will and I know exactly how much space it's gonna take I also like this so if there's no information in the label and you have a program that's gonna put information in there you want to make sure that it will stay centered or aligned with whatever you want it to, to be. So I like to change the text to default. And just as a heads up, I'll bring this up in the next video, I believe, because that's when I'll go over buttons. You can put an ampersand right there, as you see. I click enter, and it can be in front of any letter. And what happens is it will put an underline under whichever letter it's in front of here. So it's in front of the D. So put an underline under the D. When you run the program, as you can see, you don't see the underline until you hold the alternate key. If you hold down the alternate key and then click the, that letter, it will activate whatever code is behind the scenes. Usually useful with buttons, but not so much labels, because usually you don't have code that's associ associated with labels, even though you can. Uh, and I'd like to change the text align to middle center. And let's just show off some borders. Uh, this by itself, that's what it looks like without a border. Um, border style, where where are you? There you are. Uh, fixed single is just a solid line. I like fixed 3D. It's overused, but hey, you can guess why. It's, it's beautiful. So yeah, uh, there's our little label there. And uh, that's about it, just creating a label. You just click, move it over, and just look all through all these different uh, properties and see what values you want to change if you want to background color fonts whatever you want to do and that's about it so let's figure out how to create uh, variables but let's do comments first uh, so what you do is go in your code and as you can see the form load still open we'll be using that in a moment and let's create a comment first now comments is uh, are they're basically just little they're like footnotes they're ignored by the application while it's by the program while it's running uh, and basically they're just footnotes just side notes for the programmer so for an example if maybe you're a debugger maybe your job is you're given a couple hundred pages of code which is a common job to, one of your first jobs as a computer science kind of person to get experience I know it stinks but that's an off common first job as a debugger and call it what you want but anyways uh, yeah you maybe you'll get just a maybe just a couple hundred pages and you have to find a logical error. So allow me to explain those for just a moment. Runtime errors uh, basically keep your program from running 
they're these errors, the ones that list, and your program won't be able to run because during runtime it crashed or whatever. Logical errors are ba is basically um, mistakes you made. Well, they're both mistakes you made, but the program still runs, but it doesn't do what you want it to do. For an example, maybe you have math that you ha that you have it doing, and you didn't put parentheses around certain operators. So maybe it's ignoring, maybe it's abiding by order of operations, and you don't want it to. Maybe you want parentheses around a certain piece of the math. Uh, that's a logical error, and that mistake is all your fault. Nah, 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 nah I'm just, I'm just teasing, I'm just teasing you. But anyways, um, let's uh, create our, our first comment here. Because if you have really thick code, like maybe like a, like an essay, you'll want a comment in between each paragraph to kind of describe what the following paragraph is going to talk about. So when you create a comment, all the text after that will be green. So let's create a fake variable. I'll show you the syntax for a variable. So first you type in dim, D-I-M, and what that basically does is tell the program, hey, okay, you're about to declare a variable. And that's the term you use, is declare. So dim, then name of variable, and basically what that is is the name of the variable you want to give it. So this can be, this has to be dim, but this can be whatever you want. You can even make it this if you want. But uh, it has to start with either an underscore or a letter. And all the other characters must either be an underscore, letter, or number. After that, you type in as, and then whatever data type you want to give it. So let's actually go about doing that. So I'll type in dim, and I'll just give it x, just something simple, as, and let's go single, and I'll go through these in a moment. But anyways, um, let me uh, actually go back a little bit. This little thing right here is called IntelliSense. And what IntelliSense is, is it basically tries to figure out what, what word you're most likely trying to type, just to save you time. So it's got single highlighted. So let's say I didn't finish single yet, and it's got it highlighted. Just press tab, and it'll fill in the rest for you. So it's really nice to help speed up, to expedite the process. So that's declaring a variable. Initializing it um, is actually giving it a value. So I could go x equals 5. So it does that. I could go x equals, and then make it a string, which I need to actually change this to a string to show you. So, you know, I could just go in like that. And basically all the text that goes in, in there, it would be a string between your parentheses. Or you can declare and initialize at the same time. If it's a number, like a number data type, like single, decimal, integer, you can just type in a number like this. Um, if it's a string, bear in mind you need to have it called string, you can type in your uh, parentheses, not parentheses, quotes, and notice how all the text is read. That's a string. So you can have it type in whatever you want. So let's actually just keep it as a number for now. As what I do is single. Now, in order to change the text, let's have let's actually just keep it as default, so you can see how awesome this is. So basically, if you want to change the text in the label, all you do in order to access a control, any control, that's here. Basically, what you do is look at the name you gave it. So I'm going to change it to label output. Then in here, you can't do outside, but inside, any any subroutine, it needs to be inside a subroutine. Just type in label, or you know, thanks to IntelliSense, it will fill it out for me. Dot, and then text is already highlighted. That's exactly what I want. I want to access the text that's inside the label. Instead of equal to, and I can actually change it to whatever I want. I can make it another kind of string if I want, or if I wanted to make it, you know, a number. But let's just put in X. And a good common coding practice is to convert it to a string right afterwards. And we'll learn in a future video what, uh, the difference between strings that are numbers and numbers that are numbers. Which sounds confusing, but it really isn't. So if I... Um, I was about to say refresh the page. So used to my JavaScript stuff. Um, and there you go, number 5 is there. And you might be wondering, well, you have default there. Why is that not appearing? Well, what's happening is, is during execution, when the form is loading, uh, it, it's going through this command. It's saying make this text whatever's on this side. So basically it's saying, okay, make it X. And it's 5. So 5 will appear. You don't need to have the two string there. 
I mean, you really don't. Whoops. Like, you can save it and then make it run. But it's just a good uh, coding practice. But it, you don't have to. And yeah, that's, that's about all I really want to show you. I don't want to do anything advanced yet until the next video. Uh, and I'll be incorporating that with buttons. Or, you know what, maybe I won't be using buttons yet. I think that might be the next video before I actually do that. But anyways, uh, let me allow, allow to show you some data types, and then we'll be done for this video. So some data types you could uh, use, I'll make this a comment, is, so you can go dim whatever as, so let's go through the integer ones first. An integer, the integer data types are basically the data types that have to be a whole positive or negative number. The first one is byte, and basically the byte is any number from 0 to 255. So that one can't be negative, unfortunately. The next one is short, and what that one is, is, yeah, it's kind of big. It's, I'm not going to give you the exact number, it's rough, it's a little less than 32,000 to a little greater than 32,000, positive and negative. It's like 32,000, I don't know, 600, I don't know. I can't remember. I just like the number 32 because it's 2 to the 5th power. you got to love 2 to the 5th power. Uh, the next one, which is the one you'll most likely use, is integer. There you go. So these are all integers, and one of the integers is actually called integer. And that's, uh, how should I write this? Positive, negative, 2 billion... So that's a big one. And then the last one is long. Now, you might be wondering, well, wouldn't you want the one that ha has the biggest range to make sure it, you know, has everything you want? It, it, it'll, it'll have the least error possible if it, has the, if it has the biggest range. Well, depending which one you create, it's how much space it will take on your uh, program, thus taking longer to work. Now, none of the program or the sample applications will be making even in the project videos that I do after this series for Visual Basic and C Sharp, uh, none of them will take long. They're, I mean, none. Of, they're not big, huge programs. They're they're all going to be small, so you don't really have to worry about it. But basically, they, they just take up more space. It doesn't matter what the number is. It's just the fact that you're making it along that it's going to prepare for a big or really really small number. Uh, so that's why. So those are all the integers. So the next ones I like to show you are the decimals. Basically, they'll support decimal numbers or fractions. So the first one is single, which is um, to seven, seven significant digits. Uh, the next one is double, and what that is is fifteen. And the last one is decimal. Yes, there's one, just like with integer is in the integer group, decimals in the de decimal group. And, oh, what was that one? Oh, yeah, that one was 29. It was weird. Uh, so, again, if you're, if you know that you're not, that your application is not going to be dealing with endless fractions, like, let's say, one-third, uh, you know, 0.333, or even worse, uh, a worst case would be uh, two-thirds, because at some point it's going to go to seven, right? 0.666, and eventually to seven. So unless you're going to be dealing with really um, weird fractions like that, just go for single because it will take up less space. But unless you know you have to, go for decimal because then it will make sure it gets as accurate as it can. Uh, another one is Boolean. Boolean means true or false. It has to be uh, one or zero. And basically, the values that you can uh, give it will be true or false. False. It would be one or the other, so you can assign true or false. Uh, another one is char, which stands for character, and it, and basically it's a string. Uh, it has to be within quotes, and but it's only one character. That's why it's called character, and that's useful for like character counting. Um, and another one is string, which can be as much text as you want, and then another one is date, which I won't be going into with, with this. And I'm running out of time in this video, and actually, I think I did get everything. Sweet! I got everything within the 15 minutes. I couldn't believe it. Okay, so, so yeah, I'm not going to go over the date. That's something I'll probably do uh, in the future. But here's all your different things, so if you want to pause this video and just kind of memorize it, 
Uh, the long is really long. I, I can't remember the number, but it's huge. 